Are you trying to land your first job in cybersecurity? Maybe you're trying to land a different type of job in the industry. If you're like a lot of people right now, then chances are you're facing some amount of resistance from employers to stand out from the crowd. What would you say if I told you that there are specific things that you can do that are directly tied to how you're rated as a job candidate? You'd be interested, right? If that sounds great, then stick with me in this video and I guarantee that I can make you a better candidate with this information. Keep in mind that throughout this video, we're gonna primarily talk in the context of new professionals or early career professionals, but the advice is really the same no matter which level of candidate that you are. Okay, let's get into it. Now, if you're trying to land your first job, it's very likely that you've seen a lot of confusing and conflicting information. I totally get how frustrating that can be, and not only have I been in your shoes when I first started, but also it frustrates me as somebody who's built a reputation for helping people like you build their careers in cybersecurity. I wish that I could remove all the garbage information from the internet, but unfortunately it's not possible. So you're always gonna have to analyze the information that you're receiving and see if it not only makes sense, but more importantly, does it actually work? Throughout my content, the goal is to provide information that both makes sense and works, but certainly I'd love to hear about your experiences in case something has changed or if certain situations call for something different. All your input helps me continue to make great videos. So please make sure to comment because it helps other people too. So first off, let's talk about the major items that contribute to your qualifications or your tier as a candidate. Basically there's six different categories that you can acquire at a high level and they're networking, education, community involvement, experience, personal branding, and soft skills. Keep in mind that these categories weren't mentioned in the order of importance, but don't worry, we're gonna talk a lot more about them throughout this video. Now that you know at a high level what the different categories are, let's start talking about the different tiers of job candidates that we'll use to assess a candidate. Whenever we're using the tiering system, the S tier is considered the best, so for this video, that's the ultimate candidate status that you should aim to achieve. The closer that you can get to becoming an S tier candidate, easier it'll be to get a job or the specific type of job that you want. The bottom tier is the F tier or the worst candidate, and that's where we're gonna start the discussion. F tier candidates, as I just said, are the worst candidates for employers because they basically bring nothing to the table. This tier is the level that says, please train me from ground zero, and basically that I've done nothing to prepare. Honestly, I'm not even sure how I can get an interview as an F tier candidate, but it does happen. With F tier candidates, I'm not sure that this can really be somebody that's brand new or entry level that has no prior experience and actually get an interview because you're not gonna have anything on your resume to actually qualify you. More than likely, this is somebody who's trying to switch from another job or career. So you have some experience doing something with some skills that are useful enough from one of the categories where you might actually get a call. Unfortunately, once you get into an interview as an F tier candidate, it's going to become clear very quickly that you aren't a good fit because you wanna be handed the opportunity. This kind of candidate won't survive in cybersecurity because you can't even get motivated to learn the basics on your own. Sorry if you're an F tier candidate, but I'm being totally honest. All right, moving on to the E tier candidate status. E tier candidates in my eyes are really the most basic type of entry level candidates that exist. A candidate at this tier has sought out some type of related education from things like self-study and experimentation, attending training courses or boot camps, achieving certifications, or earning degrees. Education is the most basic preparation that you can do because at least you're learning something relevant. The value of education is gonna vary quite a bit depending on the method or the methods that you used. For example, one common distinction is book learning versus practical learning. This basically boils down to did you read a book or watch a video or did you actually get hands-on lab experience and actually get a chance to have your hands on the keyboard? Both can have value in your pursuit to land your first job but also to land future jobs. Typically certifications and degrees are going to give you a qualification that employers can use to quickly identify your minimum level of knowledge without ever even speaking to you. Some companies or industries will have mandatory requirements for certifications. And if that's the case, then there's no getting around it. Practical skills on the other hand, are a little more difficult to determine. Sure, an employer can give you a lab environment with specific tasks, but that's not usually the case. If you really wanna show off your practical skills, then you'll have to create videos or a blog so that employers can see you do specific practical tasks. In my free ebook on my website's Getting Started page, you'll find the exact skills and certifications that you should be pursuing. Check out the description for the link. Now from a job candidate standpoint, just about everybody trying to get into cybersecurity will be around an E-tier candidate. That means if you stop there, it's gonna be very challenging to stand out, so keep moving up in tiers. The next tier is tier D. If you want to reach this level, you first have to have the education found in tier E, but then this is where you're actually working to develop your soft skills. 
The most effective way that you can show you have soft skills is through presenting or writing anything. Frequently, people recommend things like joining Toastmasters because that forces you to present and it's documented. If you're in a degree program, joining things like debate clubs or anything else where you can use your soft skills is gonna look fantastic. They're called soft skills because you actually have to practice them and work at them to get better. People in cybersecurity who can communicate stand 100% of the time because many people, especially in cybersecurity, tend to be introverted and don't wanna communicate with people or worse, they can't communicate with people. It's not uncommon for cybersecurity staff to present things or need to write reports that are clear and well-crafted. Remember, you also have to interview at some point, so you've gotta be able to communicate then, if nothing else. If you can't communicate, then you're gonna lose some value in your candidate status. I hope you're enjoying the content so far. Let's take a minute to talk about one of our sponsors that helps make this content possible. Are you tired of overpaying for cybersecurity training? Are you interested in training from industry professionals? Are you looking for cybersecurity career services? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then CyberTrainingPro.com is the perfect platform for you. At CyberTrainingPro, we're a one-stop shop for all your cybersecurity needs. We can train you for industry certifications or just improve your overall knowledge and skills in a certain area. Unlike other platforms, we don't stop there. We can also coach you throughout your career, practice your interview skills, or create a high-performing resume with our career services. CyberTrainingPro.com isn't just another training platform. Students get exclusive access to our private community where we go beyond training courses to provide additional content, tips and tricks, and engagement with both other students and staff. Look, by the year 2025, there could be as many as 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity. With so much opportunity, why not maximize your career potential with a platform that cares about your success? Come join us at cybertrainingpro.com and start building your future today. C tier is next, and it's all about personal branding. The importance of personal branding has taken off in recent years. Platforms like LinkedIn have exploded in popularity. Depending on your personality and the type of brand that you want to build will determine which platform that you prefer to build your brand on. There's LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter. You can also build your own blog or even just go speak at conferences to get your name out there. These are all personal branding platforms. Whichever type of content and platform that you choose for Tier C can absolutely be related to what you're working on for Tier D, but it can also be something different. For example, you can work on speaking for Tier D and then writing for Tier C. You get the idea. You have to treat your career like your own personal business and build your brand. The more well-known and established that your brand is, the more reward that you can receive from it. Certainly, you don't have to be thought of as an expert, but if you can be thought of as a thought leader in the industry, then you start looking a lot more invested in the career field. A lot of times we see senior staff or leaders in the industry who are really working at developing their personal brand, but that's late in the game, and I recommend doing it very early on, at least if you want to be a C-tier candidate. Of course, remember that you have to do all the other tiers below this too. Most beginners or early career professionals stop their journey in the C-tier. Honestly, even a lot of more seasoned professionals stop here too. But guess what? You want to be an S-tier candidate, so you're going to keep going. The B-tier is where there's a shift from really focusing on yourself to more involvement in the community. B-tier candidates are starting to introduce community involvement into their brand. Do you contribute to open source projects? Are you in a leadership role for a club or a group? These are just a few ways that you can get involved, but the idea is that you're no longer focusing just on yourself. The B tier is starting to shift towards a servant leader mentality where you're starting to help the greater industry in a meaningful way. Even though we typically want to focus our efforts in cybersecurity options, this certainly could apply to another area or cause. If you can show that you're passionate about helping a community of any kind, then that set of characteristics that you have are going to shine through still. It's also nice for employers to be able to see the personal side of things. Keep in mind that if your community involvement is in a controversial area, you might not want to publicize that because that can certainly cause problems for you, but that's up to you to decide. So you've started to get involved in the community, but for A tier, you need to build your network and meet professionals in the industry. The easiest way to do this is join groups like OWASP, IEEE, ISACA, or many others where they have meetups and networking opportunities. Go to the chapter meetings, take on roles in the group, present at meetings, just do something. Personally, I like ISACA because you get recognized based on how many years that you've been a member, but most of these groups provide free continuing education credits, which can help maintain certifications. If you're in a small city, then you might not have one of these groups, but maybe you can start one up. Professional relationships can make a huge difference in getting hired or landing different jobs, so the more people that know you, the better off that you'll be. If you've done all the other tiers so far, then you'll be ahead of about 90% of candidates out there. 
but you're so close to being the S tier candidate, so why stop? S tier candidates are the top 1% of candidates in the industry. The very top thing that makes candidates stand out at this level is that they have directly related experience in a specific area. Experience really is king in the cybersecurity career field, and it doesn't matter which area we're talking about because it applies across the board. As far as beginners are concerned, this is the most difficult tier to achieve, but it can be easier to get some light experience in other areas once you're in the industry. The two types of experience that you can get are volunteer experience and paid work experience. Paid experience is always better than volunteer experience, but honestly, take what you can get. If you're trying to get your first job, you better be applying to all help desk, entry-level IT, and entry-level cybersecurity jobs that list up to three years of experience because it's all gonna help you. You can also go volunteer at places like churches and offer your services for free. Configure their wireless networks, set up security cameras, get some technology experience because some is better than none. If you already have work experience, volunteer with the cybersecurity department, take on other project assignments, interact with the team, do something. Question of the day, which tier candidate are you? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we walk through what it takes to be an S tier candidate in cybersecurity. If you need a quick recap of what those tiers are, here they are on the screen. Remember, to reach the S tier level, you have to do all the things. If you want to be another tier, then do what we talked about, but keep in mind that the order the tiers were presented absolutely matters. Thanks for watching this video, and here's another video that I think you'll like too.